Okay, so uh, let's go in to start um, with this session. Uh, you already know Manuel. He he was uh, showing us uh, uh, yesterday how to use containers and other very useful uh, tools. And today we, he will be talking about uh, how to use uh, Binder. Uh, so Manuel. Okay. Thanks. Ah, before that, uh, sorry, Manuel. Oh. Um, just uh, I wanted to to announce some change in the in the agenda. Uh, this session will be uh, a little bit shorter than that that, that it is said in the agenda. Um, uh, we will have the break at um, uh, three thirty. Okay, so we will start the discussion session at uh, at four uh, p.m. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Julian. Okay. okay. So I'm going to present. Uh, this is the as you know. This is the last uh, session of the the school, and this is another workshop. And um, this uh, this session is to to show you what is the way to introduce and to create your specific uh, workflows in order to include uh, inside Binder Binder Hub. So it's, it's, uh, it's a way to to share all your result, or your code, or your package, and all your your research in this kind of. Uh, of tool and platform. This is the content of this uh, small uh, workshop. So the idea is to give you uh, an introduction of uh, Binder. You know, Binder is super simple, but uh, um, I want to focus on different aspects in, in order to customize your deployment of your research. Uh, we answer questions like, uh, what is Binder? Why we want to use uh, Binder and the user, user cases? So. Then we will talk about the binder limitation. So because binder has limitation in your research, so this is very important to take into account if you are sharing your uh, research uh, studies with other colleagues. Uh, then we will uh, talk about uh, different workflow example using binder, binder hub and other platforms similar. No, I mean, it's binder hub, but in other platforms. Then we create a binder ready repository because uh, it's a special way to create a repository which is not super difficult, but it's just to, to follow a set of instructions. Um, the last two things is about uh, yes, using binder for code reviews and reproducibility. Um, I have a, just uh, five minutes to show you if you are interested in building build your, your own infrastructure with a, a binder in your own institution. So the idea with that is to avoid the part that, uh, because binder is in a public uh, com cloud computing services, service, and you know, so it's something that is public, uh, but uh, you can install in your own infrastructure, in your own machine in order to test and to reproduce your own uh, research uh, workflow and pipelines. Yeah, as uh, yesterday commented, we have a lot of material. This is the main material for this session. So this is the specific for Binder. We maintain the same requirement because most of the thing that we are going to do today is start with Git and GitHub as well. If you have an idea and, and you yesterday you work with a Python virtual environment, it's good to know you can install in your laptop. And then once, once you have all your environment ready, you can create a binder hub with all these requirements. Then as well with Conda, uh, mini Conda, and of course, Docker. Okay, in this case, uh, another way to create binder, a uh, binder hub repository is to, to, to build a Docker uh, image based on your on your uh, package and, and, and code. And we, I have here Singularity, but, uh, Binder Hub is not supporting Singularity, so internally, so just Docker. Okay. <clears throat> All the extra material. So we have here, we have here uh, Rachel. So the Turing Way is the main, the main uh, part of the documentation come from the Turing Way, and they have a lot of information about Binder, how to build and, and, and how to deploy, etc. So it's the first. Uh, the first source of uh, knowledge here. And okay, let's uh, work. So this is the as well. We have the same. And in this case, 
to open science school with all the all the the session that uh, that I did and I'm lecturing today. Okay, so we're going to start the this part. So the idea with uh, Binder is uh, when I want to show Binder. Binder is just check Binder is that. Binder is this web page, okay? But wait a moment, <laughs> and I will explain what exactly this web page. Uh... So well, Binder is is a, it's a tool that uh, enable to to create uh, interactive because you can put inside your Binder a Jupyter notebook uh, in order to play with code, but as well you can run something and open a terminal inside this uh, Jupyter notebook and play with your code directly instead to have um, a Jupyter notebook in order to, to play with an uh, interactive uh, environment. As well, you can share your, your environment or your link because at, uh, in the end, uh, Binder, uh, the idea with Binder is to create a link that you can paste in your, in, in, in this, in this web page that you can see here, GitHub. And once you have this uh, link, that is the link of your repository, and then you, you click launch in order to start the creation of all the necessary uh, service, application, etc., to have your package and your code ready to, to use in an in a interactive way. And the base of uh, Binder is, uh, well, Binder is a super big project and I will you in the last project because I, I, will, I will show you. But uh, it contains a lot of te te technologies like Docker, containers, environment, Conda, Kubernetes, uh, and many, many things. So, and all of, all of these things uh, deliver in a cloud environment. Okay, you can install Binder in your own laptop, but uh, you need a big and, and power uh, laptop to have all these uh, things ready. Um, how Binder achieve um, reproducibility for our project? So the main thing is you are using with Binder, you need to use a, a repository, a GitHub repository with all your code, all your analysis, all your requirement. So this is the first part, create a repository. So in, for this moment, you have a, a something that is reproducible because it's a repository that you can clone, you can use, you can distribute if your license, of course, is uh, ready to, to use it, this kind of reproducibility. And then um, when you have this, bind, this, this link, you can use it in, in this platform in Binder. You just need the source of your uh, code, okay? In order to start all the system. Jupyter notebooks, uh, Docker containers, Conda, Python environment, etc. So by using a direct link, so it's a, this is the, like, the direct link of uh, a binder, uh, all the system that uh, has or has in, installed uh, a binder have can deploy all your studies. Uh, Binder have, have two components, two main components. So the main component is one of the components is package manager, as commented yesterday, and, and container. So if you know a bit about uh, package manager, it's perfect because it's a, it's a way that you can use to build uh, a Binder half of your research study and containers. So you can use it the same that yesterday we did. If we use today, we can we can reproduce the same work is something something that we are going to do today. Okay, what is and what is not uh, Binder? So yeah, Binder is everything that I commented. It's something that you can use to send some result or the result of your research paper to your colleagues and they just click launch and see your code and can play with your, with uh, the same, in the same way that you reproduce your, your environment. <coughs> It's a cloud system, so of course you can install in your in your own laptop. But 
I think that the best way to, to do that is in a platform, in a cloud platform, in your own infrastructure. <coughs> Sorry. Um, Binder, is it, this is one of the, the best uh, feature that uh, Binder has is uh, support uh, super wide range of uh, programming language. Think that you can use C++ if you want or whatever, because of course, when you start Binder, you see a notebook, but you then you can open a terminal in the inside Binder. But terminal has thing to install in the container or in the environment. So it's very, very cool. Um, and yes, of course, it's, some, some, it's transparent because you send the link to your colleague where all the code is in this repository and you can see as well all the way to all the, the instruction and the setup for the container environment, as well the data that you that you need probably for your research <laughs> and all the, the steps to build the system. What is Binder is not, uh, so Binder is not Git, of course. It's just a tool that use a Binder to uh, put your research in a executable way. Of course, it's not a tool to uh, storage data. This is something very important because if you, you know, if you are uh, working with uh, more than uh, two gigabytes, GitHub is not for this kind of uh, binary field, for this size of, file, of files. Probably you need to use another uh, tool to store the data and then get or another kind of uh, solution to do that. Because you know, you are working in a Cloud computing environment that is not yours. It's a, a, a company that have this this binder have installed, and you have some limitation. And another important things to take into account is uh, it's not something that you can run in a something that is computationally intensive workflow. So it's to test thing to show something that more or less the result are are distilled, etc. Okay, as as well large scale analysis. Um, and the last thing is okay. Okay, this is something that uh, for production, uh, um, for production ready application, of course, is something that you can share. Your not for for research is okay, but something that is critical is not the best platform because it's public. Okay. Okay, I want to show you here different use cases uh, because the idea. Okay, um, do I need a binder or not? So the the thing here is uh, how to can create a live demonstration. So you have your code, you want to show you to your colleagues. It's a very, very easy and very fashion way to show your, your um, research, okay? Another part is uh, shared computational works on papers, so very easy and, and as well you can uh, use it every day. You, you can start your research uh, Jupyter playing with the, with the link, launching and start doing your things, okay? Yeah, and sharing content and education material. So basically all the things that uh, uh, you have with, with a, a Git repository, but uh, the best thing is it it enables um, a Jupyter environment ready to use with uh, your language. So in order to play directly in a cloud computing, in a cloud environment without installing in your things in your laptop. So in a cloud environment, everything is possible. So that's fine. This is basically, for common use cases, but the idea with that is to reproduce your your research studies in a very flexible way in a cloud environment. Check. Okay, this is a a diagram from the from the Turing way. It's a beautiful uh, uh, diagram. So this is the overall workflow for in our research, I, I, I think. So, so yeah, you can see it. So Jane has written a paper based on this experiment. Okay. She want to send to other colleagues in order to reproduce, to improve, to check, to validate, etc. So let's send the link. Okay. Um, she had uh, as well, I commented during all these three days, the documentation as in, in just in, in the code, as well in the repositories, how to, how to do the things, 
uh, including the code, where is the data, how to produce the visualization, et cetera, et cetera. And then you can, uh, she published everything in a, in a repository. And this is basically the idea. And with Pinder Hub, what you have to create, a, and now we are going to, to do that, create a specific configuration uh, with different, different parameters in order to create this repository uh, as a repository uh, ready for Binder. Okay. Once you have configuration, notebook, and resource, you can share this link. This is the same link that you have here, but with an extra information in order to, to reproduce to the others. Okay. Okay, this is basically the, the workflow. Um, it's very it's interesting to know that uh, all that you can see here is more or less the work that we are doing during our our regular days in our job. Um, and here, yes, you can see here um, what is exactly the process. No, we bind the X scan and check your, your your GitHub repository, check different files. In this case, uh, bind the YML or a Docker file or environment. YML or a rec, uh, requ requirement TS, uh, text, okay? And then build the Docker container, Docker image with all this uh, uh, instruction, without your configuration, get the data and many, many things, okay? And finally launch a Jupyter notebook in order to, to show you uh, this in interactive interface to, to play with your data, okay? This is basically the idea with Binder. Now we are going to, to create a binder repository, a, sim, a, sim, a simple uh, binder project. So it's super easy. To, we have to take into account the next point. I added here different, different points because this is something very important. This is hardware. Of course, you are using uh, uh, this cloud platform. Uh, binder Hub is working in uh, Intel in 74 bits, so probably all the distribution that you need are uh, are in this hardware, but uh, why not if you are using another architecture? So you have to take into account that. Uh, the computational environment, so yeah, you need the specific software, all the package, the inputs that is very, very important because you know, you are you have a different, you, you have cons constraint in this uh, binder hub and one of them is the limitation in a storage. So probably you need to get this data externally or split or whatever. And, and the code, the code as a notebook or, or a script. <laughs> and then you need a, a URL where you have all this uh, environment in a repository. Okay, let's play. So we have uh, this option, this is the binder hub. This is the main uh, platform. This is the public uh, platform that uh, allow you to use this kind of uh, binders. And uh, specifically, this platform has a lot of uh, limitations, like uh, resource uh, constraint. It's not so much CPU as well time limit, so you can spend just twelve hours if you want. Once you have twelve hours working with this binder, close, and then you have to relaunch again, okay? And if you change something, you have to manually update your change to your repository or something like that. Uh, limitation of the disk space, network limitation, con uh, concurrent users, so or just limit one user, but you can probably access to the same by different user and security, okay? Okay, we are going to create the first environment, so, uh, you can create, we can create, I, if I had time, I think I have time to do that. We have a different environment I will create for different uh, profiles. Anyone here is using Julia? No? R? Scala? Python? <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> Python, oh, so, oh, Python for everyone. Okay. That's perfect. Okay, the, the first thing that I'm going to 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 do is to create. Um, if you want, if you have time and you want, and you have your laptop, it's a very interesting, and very nice um, um, task to create a, a repository. So something very very easy. Let me check. Is it? Yes, we are going to create a new repository. Repository will be in pipe, pipeline 
V2, minor, public. I'm going to add a readme, as you command, I went before. And we are going to install, uh, to apply for a license. Yes, it's very, very important. So the license, no license, no, well. Uh, <laughs> I, I usually use a MIT license. I don't know why, but I use the this one. <laughs> no, I'm joking. So yeah, we are the first step is to create this repository. Yes, great. Hi, man. Uh, we have a, a question uh, yes, on Slack. Do you want to? Yes. Sorry. Yes, Georgius uh, asks if does it also work with GitLab repositories? Yes, works with uh, with um, different repositories. You can see here all the 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 options. So basically, this is the option GitHub, just Git repository, Git repository, sorry, GitLab, Zenodo, Xshare, so many of the sources. Okay. In the end, you can, if you install this application in your own infrastructure, probably you can use another way, just for instance, a zip file, because it's just uh, something that uh, it takes. Uh, I think that it's not super complex to add a new data source here. Okay? So this have a uh, most of the the tools uh, or the platform to get uh, a repository ready. Okay, let me check. Yeah, I'm going to see what happened here. The readme. Oh. This, of course, is okay. Okay, now perfect. Okay. Okay, this is the, the repository. We are going to start our research uh, project. So we are going to add some information in the readme. But the first step is this one is to create a public repository. So if you have a GitHub account, you can create a, a first repository. We are going to add uh, our code. Okay, I have my code here check here. I'm going to add here my code. Here, check. This was this one. Let me check if I can read better. Uh, window, window. Okay. As you can see here, I added you can you can add your own code, your code in the in in a Python notebook or as well in, in a Python script. I add it as a, a Python notebook. Check if I can see then. This is the code, okay? This is basically the same example that yesterday we were working, okay? It's with the, the horse head. This is the binder. Let me check if I want to change the name. Just to remove that, and I will explain why I'm changing the name of the index, okay? This is the first step. This is the code. And now, you, as you remember yesterday, we need the requirement in order to reproduce my, my workflow. In this case, as you remember, we use a matplotlib, matplotlib and numpy, astropy, and, and a sticky learn, uh, sorry, sorry, a sticky image, okay? This, this library. So the next step is to add a requirement file. I'm going to add, it's very simple. You can do it uh, directly from the GitHub web page, so nothing to install in your in your laptop. Requirement. 
Oh, well, requirements, requirements. And I'm going to add, here are in the specific version, so it's, it's good to have uh, your version ready instead to, to um, have uh, another version or, or whatever. So I, I, it's, I included all the, the version numbers here. Okay, commit the chains. Okay, so in this moment, yeah, I can run this uh, binder half. Okay, uh, this is the way to to create a binder half environment. Just if you realize, just we just need the, our code and to add the requirement. That's all. This is a when you have at your project, you want to share it with other colleagues. Just include your requirement. Of course, this is a very very simple. Uh, Workflow, but if you need more things, I will explain later. But uh, this is the first approach. So once we have uh, this uh, binder, I'm going to paste. I'm going to co copy the the URL of my project. So this is this is ready. You have here one three option to 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 run. One one of them is uh, the binder hub. This 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 one. The second one is uh, the SKO GitLab. Okay, Git sorry uh, binder hub. And this third one is uh, um, Jai from Netherlands. It's part of the SCAPE project, okay? Why well, I have three? Because you can see what happened. I'm going to paste the, the link. This is the link that I want, uh, that you have to, to share in this application. And um, you select GitHub is by default. If you are working with different branch, uh, branch is a part of, it's a kind of, uh, it's a way to, to create a, um, a code that you work independently of the of the other code, and then you can well basically if you have different ones, you can add here. If not, just paste uh, the URL of the of your of your binder repository, and then just launch. Yeah, this morning I had the same issue. Uh, I probably a lot of. Uh, People working on that, or well, I don't know, but uh, two days ago uh, we had the same problem uh, as well uh, on Monday because many people, or I don't know if uh, it's a, some kind of limitation, but no worries, we are going to to test in another in another cloud environment for Binder. Second one, let me check if I'm the correct one or not. This is that one, and this is the Binder in Hive. Okay, this is you can use directly. Meanwhile, it is building. Let me check. You can see here. Well, no, it's not here. Yeah. Let me. I, I'm going to repeat. Okay, because it's super fast. Let me. Let me check. Okay. Uh, let me check. When I paste uh, this uh, link of the repository, you can check here that uh, it uh, is uh, generating a kind of batch with the name, with directly the link that you have to, to send to your colleague. So the link that you have to send to your colleague is that, okay? And this link contains everything in order to put what is exactly the computing resource, the cloud platform, and what is your repository. And it takes everything and works. Okay. In this page, and this is the mybinder.org, it's not working because I think that it has a lot of uh, user working and say, okay, today no more users. So, and uh, for that, to do that is to use another binder have um, environment. In this case, this is the link I want to show you. I'm going to do the same, but uh, specifically, I'm going to paste this link in a, in a notebook. Oh, let me check here. Copy link. This is the platform I want to show. This is exactly the same at the binder. Okay, and I'm going to paste again. 
this uh, the link of my repository. Okay, but uh, so I'm going to uh, let me check. This is the same, but okay. But I'm going to paste because we could generate previously. Okay, so this is the link that you have, you, you share with your colleagues, and now I launch, and you can see that it's super fast. And why it is super fast? You know, it's super fast because this morning I paste the link, and the first time that you create this uh, image, it took uh, maybe 10, 20 minutes, in, but once it it's created is just because it's in the catchy of the system. Okay, so we have our project. You can see here the index that we that I commented. Let me check because it's uh, I want to split in different several uh, parts just to follow the, the steps. And the last part here. So as uh, we define the requirement, I can just uh, work around with the, 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 the part of the code. So you can see here we have we are working with NumPy perfectly. I'm going to download here the image. So it takes nothing. Now remember, this is the, the original version that we were working yesterday. It has the output in the slash output. A slash output is not existing in this cloud platform. So we remove that, we play. Okay, now you can see here the image generated. Okay, uh, let me share with you. So it is a fits file and converted to PNG. Now we are going to create different filters. So oh, an error here because I put remove the figure. I yeah, I have the filters. You have here filter to detect uh, ads. So okay, we have the same the same thing that yesterday we did in five minutes because okay, I want I know more or less the code. I know the requirement. I want to play. I want to show. I want to run this in a cloud environment. So this is the way to do that in a very very easy way. Of course, this is a simple, very very simple example. But if you if you want to build something more complex like a for instance, I want to show you one of the use cases that we have in, in, in our group was this one. This is Asteroseismology. And the thing here was that uh, we have uh, to, we need to use uh, Fortran instead of Python and other. So it was complex because, uh, okay, you know, complex. Uh, Python, Python, but like as well as in other in, in astrophysics, I, I guess, of course, yes. Um, but so we have to to try another approach in Binder in order to produce or in order to to generate um, an environment to play with uh, with uh, Fortran files, Fortran code. In this case, if you want something more complex, you just need to to create a Docker file. Remember that yesterday we created a Docker file with uh, our libraries and extra things. If you want to have uh, your specific pipeline with your data, with um, environment variables, with uh, everything, you can package in a Docker file and just put in a Docker container, Docker image, sorry, and in a repository with a specific pre uh, prepared by Bounder and it works. For instance, this is the approach to provide a Fortran. If you can see, just to provide Fortran in, in Jupyter notebooks and, direct, and directly play with that without uh, headaches, uh, just uh, we, 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 we just need to install Fortran and this part that is specific for Binder Hub. So I, I, want, I want to explain later. In order to have all these things ready um, in this environment, so in this in this case, if we play with that uh, with this 
with this, uh, I can see that, okay, we have here as well this batch in your project, in your research, in your Git repository, you can add this uh, binder button that uh, link directly to, to this place where you can deploy this, uh, these tools, okay? This, uh, this um, research environment. Okay, so question in this moment, something to comment? As you see, we are doing the same that yesterday, but in a very flexible and scalable way. Because the good, one of the things that I don't, I don't comment in is, is um, um, this application can be scalable because, of course, scalable number of users, because you can share your research and your study. Many people and all the all your colleagues can, can run your experiment independently and test and give your feedback, if uh, feedback, etc. Okay, so yeah, we can play with this is a one session that is working in Jupiter dot uh, yes, Jive Netherland. So it's on one server, you can use another server or you can install in your own environment as well. I'll comment it in a few minutes uh, later. Um yes, yes, perfect. Uh install in our own environment. Uh was it in with yeah. it? Yeah, thank you. Um, so just just to, to help uh, for future usage, to to install, you know, so we don't have the limitations like yeah, yeah too many users and things like that. Yeah. Uh, to, is it easy to convince the IT department to set up? Uh, <laughs> question. Uh, what was your experience? Uh, yeah, 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 it's, it's, it's uh, perfect. Yeah. For instance, in this, uh, this is open and free. Open, free. Well, it's free because uh, you can ask text, but uh, it's open for all, all the um, the community. But of course, uh, you don't have you don't have um, a access login or whatever. So it's something that you have to okay. If uh, you have a thousand users and they realize that they can execute something for free, probably use it your service uh, in order to produce a result or to verify something or to so it's something very interesting. You can install a binder as in your own infrastructure. Uh, but uh, Binder uh, have a, not in this web uh, in, in have a, um, an extra interface in order to protect this one with uh, escape IAM or an IAM system or login system in order to just focus in a specific uh, user in your environment, your institution or something like that. Because of course, this is something that they take internally. It uh, has a it requires a lot of computing resources. Okay, because you are building a Docker container, it's building something, something, uh, and, and now I want to show you as well on other use cases. Uh, and, and yeah, you yeah, you can move internally. Yes, of course, you can do that. Yeah. But with that is to try, for instance, if you want to reproduce your result, you have a small version or, or a version in your infrastructure and to use for the research community in your local area or whatever. But yes, yes, it's something that if you, um, if you 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 have to protect because it's uh, something that uh, take a lot of, a lot of uh, CPUs and resources in your own infrastructure as well. The security issues. So you are the user that uh, use that uh, can create Docker files and Docker files. You know, is building something with the system, so it's critical at some point. So something that to take into account. It can be injected with. Uh, Different strange software, okay, something like that. Thanks. Uh, all right. Question? Yes. Yes. Uh, I think we missed a, a question yes. on the Zoom chat from Tamari. How do you try and sort common issues with a binder? I don't know if. Common maybe, issues? Yes. Maybe if C or he can speak, uh, can. Yeah, the was... question uh, through through the Zoom or Tamari. Did you want to span the the, the question uh, about Binder? No, again. No. Yeah, well, I try to to explain. I think from. To me, one of the in two year, two years working or three years, two years and a half working with Binder, I think that the most the, the problem with uh, the basic problem is that uh, you need resources for Binder 
in your own infrastructure. And the main problem here is to, to enable these uh, resources for the user because, you, you know, now when uh, when clicking the, in this link works perfectly, in one second you have the environment ready to work. But if you are building something, it's super consuming. And if you, today you are, you are creating a, um, a repository and then to modify, it takes an, again the, the, the Git and create the, the, the Docker file and all the infrastructure. So it takes a lot of time. So I think that is the, the problem here is a cloud computing environment that needs uh, a requirement is difficult to debug, but you internally you can debug in, uh, because you can create the Docker file. If, if, if you have your Docker file working in your computer, probably in, in uh, ensure that in Binder works, but the problem is the resources that Binder have this public platform has. So this is one of the, the, the problem that, uh, because of course you can use it another uh, open platform for binders, so not limited to the, this one. Okay. Okay. So this is all the option. Uh, this option come from this escape. This is something that I want to comment. Mm -hmm. Sorry, escape us from. Let me check if it's the time I'm looking for. No, well. Mm, what is it? What is it? Yeah. For instance, uh, and, uh, answering your question, so I'm going to log in, log, in, log out. I'm going to register in, in, in this platform, yeah, as an escape. I'm going to play with an interactive analysis. So we can choose different data access and I'm going to try with the binder. Yeah, you can see here different workflows. For instance, this is one example I want to show you. This is something, this is an example very complex, taking data, uh, different uh, pipeline, uh, it's super complex and not, it's not just a, a line that you can reproduce. This is another, so for instance, I'm going to one that I want to show you. You can choose different from, for, for, for that. In this case, SKO binder, I tested with SKO, but I have not the result and take a lot of time. Binder is not working today, as you know, and this one was working. So when I use this platform and you click here, when you start running this uh, this uh, workflow and this in this platform, it uh, asks you about the credentials. So in order to so just the escape user can use binder. So and the same for guy uh, give uh, sorry, give uh, binder half. Okay. I have the here, the thing to the more complex is to uh, add a as completely before file with everything inside. Basically, it's the same Docker that you create, but you have to add just uh, Jupyter support. You have to add Python, sorry, Python uh, notebooks and Jupyter notebooks. You need to specify exactly uh, the version of your um, of your image. In this case, I'm using a SleepPy notebook, or you can use Ubuntu or whatever. You need to identify uh, specifically. You cannot use here latest because no latest here. You need to say, okay, this is my version that I want to use, and then just permission in order to yes yeah, to have a uh, one user for everything. Okay. And this uh, this pipeline. Let me check. No, well, this is uh, here. This is the hype. Lunch. Check it's working. 
case building because uh, it, it it it's not it's not in the in the kitchen so it's building now when i build when the system build this now it's it's creating the container and many 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 libraries just to for the, the base environment but once we have all these things ready the next user that use this container is the the, um, the access is direct so just play and you have this so after pipe probably takes 30 minutes an hour depending of all the the requirements okay so okay meanwhile this is working in binder examples you can see a lot of uh, examples in order to test with the uh, Jupyter uh, notebooks with Julia Octave right you know it's MATLAB um this is the tree conda with, with the requirement this is the the minimal example that i did that we did uh bokeh okay what else More here voila r okay so r sorry uh, latex uh, etc so all the option here as well for instance we can add here the fortran but we don't have time to do that but we can do that okay include it in this repository um yes this is all the examples let me check when i'm going to the main documentation and the last two things that i want to show you here today is where is it sorry yeah yes i saw about um yeah one once we have all our um our code you have to choose what exactly you want to 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 use or python environment is something that is simple or if you have something more complex use a docker file in order to create all the research one issue that we have is where we store the data because of course you can download that you can you have limitation it's something that you have to take into account and basically that's all you need the, this link and this link can be shareable with your colleagues and the last thing that I want to comment today is uh, how we can deploy this system in your own infrastructure because it's important, as you can see, and you want to share this, your result. This is the, the original and yeah, this is the, the I, I created, so not found, something happened in between. And one of the issues that we have with this uh, public platform is that probably no resources, but this is the interesting to have this infrastructure in your own resources because your own your own researcher can be working a GitHub repository sent to this uh, to your own platform and you have uh, all the results ready in a cloud platform that to do that okay I have here just a, as a summary uh, this is a very 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 nice documentation on how to create your own infrastructure in your laptop as well and in your in in at well as well in cloud computer cloud environment like uh, azure um even watson and other cloud platform okay so it's, it's a very very well and very detailed information about how to deploy uh, you have all the requirement as well all the configuration files to have your binder system ready so if you want to test this uh, at, in the end uh, there's a super complex uh, platform, but it's easy to install. It's easy to install, but you need resources. Of course, in your laptop you can install, but it's not the best way because you have to export your, your laptop to the, to the internet. It's not the best way. So the idea is to install in a in a cloud platform in your in your organization to provide this service for your community using, as commented uh, Mohammed, uh, authentication in different ways to provide different resources for different users, or etc. So just to keep uh, here, so basically this platform works uh, on top of Kubernetes. So it's something strange probably to, to, to you, but it's basically a way to, to manage multiple uh, and many, many containers. So because in your laptop, you can manage 100 containers or well, depending on your resources. But when you put this platform in, in internet or in cloud computing, probably you have more than 100 users 
playing with your system in, in real time. So you need a lot of resources ready. So in this um, in this documentation, you have all the steps to create uh, and very very well documented, detailed, etc. So, but basically. This is uh, because this is configured in a in a um, for uh, Azure Microsoft Azure Cloud Platform. But this is basically for all the. But you just need this one. So do a step. Basically, you have to install Kubernetes locally, install Helm, and then. Get the repository of uh, of uh, binder hub where the binder things is in, in this repository, and then install binder hub. Okay. Once you have this, you have installed in your local system, for instance, or in your environment, binder. So okay, of course uh, you have different things because you you need to binder need to know what is exactly the the external IP that will publish this web page, etc. But basically, this is the idea. And then with that is, of course, you can send, you can share all this, all your research with uh, your colleagues. But you need a, you need a platform to to enable that, uh, to enable this this research uh, part. So, and yes, that I think that uh, that that that's all I want to comment today. So, I let me check if I have more information. But I think that is is most of the thing that I want to comment today. For the last session, and uh, yes, this uh, that's all. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Question, Listen. things to comment, issues, anything. <laughs> so, any question, Rachel? Rachel. Thank you, Manu. That's Thanks. really great. Um, I just kind of wanted to give a practical example of when this can be really useful. Um, you know, we talked about you know how it can help you, you know, share with your clients so that they don't have to download any dependencies or install software on their machines. But this is particularly useful when you've got, you know, a really busy supervisor or a really busy PR as part of your project. You just send them the link to the binder. They can immediately like check your analysis and check your work and start looking at it instead of, you know, trying to download complicated software or you know trying to find a meeting time to talk about it so um yeah thank you for that really nice uh, workshop Thanks, yeah it is i think that one of the important things is that you can send the link and your supervisor that just click in and you have the system or the, the environment ready to play yeah, or modify it one of the things that i don't comment it is once you are here uh, modifying something and you are playing with the the fits file whatever if uh, your supervisor want to add some comment here, he can add the comment, and in the idea, okay, can I see this uh, this uh, this change or this improvement? Yes, of course you can do that, but I don't know if in this version, but you can collaborate with others, and when you have a modification, you can see in real time. As well, you can use another option, so you can open the terminal and and use Git to push. This option, this uh, change, and of course you have your modification, and your student have uh, the improvement ready once they. So this is another pipeline. As well as commented, you can use it uh, not just the Jupyter notebook. You can play directly with the terminal and play with your Python scripts instead to have an interactive environment. So it's super easy for supervisor. And yeah, thanks, Rachel. Questions? Any other question? Someone from, yeah. from Zoom? Oh, Zoom. No. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So um, for each uh, container that it, it, it loads, does it, uh, does it make a virtual machine to be secure, let's say? Uh, because containers aren't secure. Yeah. But uh, especially when you want to give services to, you know, to a large community or something like SKA or... Yeah. Um, so does the, the host uh, have to... Infrastructure? Is that, is yeah, that the, the way that uh, it works is uh, you have a, a system, a on-premise system or physical system or virtual machine. And inside this virtual machine, you install Kubernetes. And inside this virtual machine, you have containers. So containers are yeah, three yeah. layers so, exactly. of abstraction. So okay, so it's uh, <laughs> a super complex system. So you just 
send the link, but internally, all the things that's happening in, in the middle are super, super complex. So just taking the GitLab repository, expand the GitLab, adding the dependencies, and then providing the, the endpoint just for that, just to you as a user, because it's independent of a u other user with this session for you. So it's a lot of uh, things. So it's a, it's an art, it's a software art. <laughs> So this is an example of um, when I've seen this in use, that's been just really amazing. So um, sometimes when I, you go through the, the peer review process, it can take months to get a review back, or sometimes even years. I've seen people experience some, some missed a few times people who have shared a link to the prime door containing all of their analysis, and they received a referee report back. And a couple of days yeah. because the referee was able to just immediately see exactly what they did play with their analysis check things um so that's also a really really nice use case of of why this is a really useful tool yeah yeah it's, it's true thanks Rachel yes yeah yeah very yeah. Nice. Many times probably you think that the referee is not going to spend time looking through the code but uh, you can you can be surprised you can be surprised because when you have that possibility, some some people just take that opportunity to to look to look into the details. And, and as Lourdes was saying, was mentioning in in, in Michael Jones' paper, uh, we got a, a I mean a very very specific comment in, in a paper saying something about uh, an observer or something like that. So it was something that unexpected. So yeah. I, I would say that uh, when we were defi defining the program, we were speculating on um, giving a, like an advanced tutorial on how to deploy Binder. But uh, pro probably that was too much, so we decided mm -hmm. not to do it. But uh, if, if anyone is interested on that, uh, just let us know. Um, yes. I mean, yes. we maybe can organize something if, if you want to try to, to deploy it in, in your institute or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, there is plenty of community. There is a lot of information there, there but uh, um, yeah, we can prepare. We got a uh, kind of hands on to install in your own infrastructure. Yeah, it's good. Top, yes. I think that would actually be really useful because um, that uh, the tutorial you showed, the Zero to Binder Hub, that was. I think we we did those workshops back in 2019. So it, that material might even need updating. Does it say when the last commit was? Yeah. So um, so yeah, it's a really really useful starting point. But if you do um, if you do host your own workshop and you go through it and you can directly contribute back to the project and submit any updates to okay. to changes that you find along the way, that would be helpful. Yeah. Okay. Perfect.